Hey everybody! Today I'm going to talk about the timeline of the Dan Markell murder in relations to Catherine McFanois and her new trial. I'm going to start with April 25th, 2014. Catherine McVanois and Charles Adelson joke about a conversation that they had about deep sea fishing with Sigfredo Garcia. Catherine has admitted that this was a joke and that Charles Adelson and Sigfredo Garcia would never have gone deep sea fishing together. June 28th through July 4th, 2014, this is the trip that Catherine McBanwa and Charles Adelson took to Key West, where Charles Adelson paid for most of the trip. This was their last hurrah before they broke up after the murder. Next we have a phone call that was between Katie and Sigfredo Garcia. Katie called Sigfredo at 12.01 a.m. July 18th, 2014. This was the night before the murder. I believe that they spoke about that Sigfredo had arrived in Tallahassee, that everything was going smooth to plan. The next day we have the murder at 10.52 a.m. The next phone call that we have between Katie and Garcia is that same day after the murder, Garcia calls Katie at 12.30 p.m. about an hour and a half after the murder, probably to tell her that it's done so Katie can call the Adelsons and relay information. You'll notice that there are no call times between Catherine and Charlie the day of the murder because I believe and the state believes that they were together the day of the murder because Catherine's children were being babysat by Yindra. Quite a while after the murder, there was some downtime. They thought that they'd gotten away with it. Police were still kind of grasping at straws, didn't know the answers yet. November 6, 2014, Charlie texts Catherine, put that you work in office, not at home. This is one of the gifts that Charlie gives Catherine after the murder that he was gonna hire her to work at the office so she could get health insurance for the children. She was probably filling out forms for her insurance. February 12th, we have consecutive checks written to Katie from the Adelson Institute. These checks were written for February 12th, February 26th and March 11th, 2015. So Charles did put Catherine to work at the Adelson Institute. She was not actually in the Adelson Institute. Nobody can attest to this, but this was purely for her records so she could get health insurance for her children and Charlie was willing to help her out. Other instances, Charlie was willing to help Catherine out March 26, 2015, Charlie offers Catherine a flight to the Dominican Republic for her and her mother through text. May of 2015, Sigfredo and Catherine are back together, according to sources. October 19, 2015, Charlie texts Catherine, do you want a cruise for your mom? Another of the many gifts that Charles offers to Katie and gives to Katie. May 20th, 2015, Catherine texts Charlie that money is tight and she needs her car fixed. April 19th through 20th, 2016, we moved to 2016 now. This is when the FBI and the police department are on to the Adelsons and Catherine, Lewis, and Garcia. So they start the wiretaps. And the bump. April 28th, 2016, we have the FBI bump calls to the Adelson Institute. Now, the, April 28th was a key date for the bump. April 28th, 10.43 a.m. Charles says to Katie, all I'm saying is find out who the bleep it is because the next call is going to be 
the FBI. And when they do catch them, they're going to be asking a lot of questions about who Katie is. Tell them, stop playing their games. I don't know who you need to talk to, but this needs to be nipped in the butt. The next phone call is between Katie and Charlie on the same day, the 28th of 2016, 10.43 a.m. Katie says to Charlie, I'm gonna handle this bleep myself, bro. This bleep is bleeping BS. It's either the FBI playing games or whatever it is. I don't give a bleep about this bleeping code bleep anymore. So they were talking in code. Um, that's pretty obvious. Catherine admits to it. They know someone might be listening to them. So they do go back and forth about being careful of explaining their guilt. They are being careful of saying too much. The next phone call is at 12.41 p.m. April 26. 28th, April 28th, 2016, Charles says to Katie, he's coming up with a lot of bleeping details. Tell someone to stop this bleep. So at this point, they're well aware that somebody knows what they did. They know that this might be the FBI. So they're kind of scared. 1.22 PM, Catherine says to Sigfredo Garcia, they said our names. It's getting too detailed. Somebody knows for sure. Garcia says, yeah. Katie says, for sure. They obviously know somebody. So at this point, Catherine and Garcia are talking about somebody knows. Charles Adelson is visibly shaken about this. So is Sigfredo. Katie calls Charlie at 4.58 p.m. She says, people could just be Googling blank or whatever it is. Charlie says, exactly. Catherine says at one point, you're saying too much. You know that they might be recorded over the phone call. They're being careful, as careful as they can while meeting in person and talking about this. They're pretty much freaking out. On May 24th, there's another wiretap that has some tape that I wanna listen to. There's still things that I would like to listen to a little bit more. Between the wiretaps of Charlie and Katie, May 24th, that's the day before. Sigfredo Garcia is arrested. I'm gonna hopefully do more videos. May 25th, 2016, Garcia is arrested. June 1st, 2016, the police go to the Adelson Institute looking for records for Katie. October 1st, 2016, Katie is arrested. October 4th, 2016, Luis Rivera is arrested and convicted. And then we have the trial in 2019. October 1st through 11th, where Sigfredo Garcia is convicted and Catherine McMahon has a mistrial. And that leads us to today where we're awaiting her retrial. So more videos to come, you guys. Please follow my channel. Also follow Mentor Lawyer. He follows the Dan Markell case. And follow Justice for Dan on Facebook. I hope you guys are having a nice week. Bye.